Hello, welcome to another episode of the Freak Talk team. This time we are going to do something different. In our last community chat, we discussed about our intention to implement Reticulum. Reticulum is an amazing technology and that is not a introduction on the technology itself. You have all the videos on YouTube that we will link in the description that can give you an initial hint. But there is no video that describes step by step how to uh, install the most interesting part of the technology that is the Air Node. What is the Air Node? It's a device, a device like this. Maybe you already have one, especially if you are familiar with the MeshTastic project. That is a wonderful project. We believe that uh, Reticulum Air Node has some additional potentiality, but Today we are going to introduce how to install the Air node. So to start, what we need to do is to install the utilities. This also is not part of the video. We will link that in the description, some instruction initially. So we assume that you have the utility installed and now you want to install the installation. And what you need to do is to run this command here that will do the auto install of your software and you see the first thing that happen is uh, you get a hello and then it will discover automatically ports and you see that here there are two ports discover uh, you have com3 that is empty and com10 that you has none and something so we can assume that on com10 we have our device that is connected to a usb cable now, when I tried the first time, I had no port because in Windows 11, I was missing some drivers. So I needed to install the drivers. Um, yes, I know I should not use Windows 11, but it is like it is. So, but now we know that this COM10 and so we go forward and we input one for COM10 now we are probing devices and that is another thing that was kind of puzzling me okay which one is which one there are different type of Liligo, LoRa uh, so I knew that my device is a Liligo and it's kind of old so I was assuming okay probably it's version one um, to be sure on the home page there are different links that bring you to the page where you can buy the product and there are also pictures of the product and depending from the type of product you will be able to answer also to the next question that is even more interesting which type of chip is on your t-beam um, in general depending where you are if you are in north america I assume that you have buy something that is legal here, so it will be in the 868 to 922, uh, 23 megahertz. Um, if you are in Europe, probably you have the 433 megahertz. But as you can see, there are two different chips. And surprise, surprise, the chip with the higher um, number is not necessarily the newer one. If I understand correctly, the 1262 is uh, newer than the 1268. But after some investigation, I discovered that mine is the 1276. And um, yeah, that is what I did after searching on internet. Uh, check out on the chip itself. You should have some number, but not in all the chips. So next step is to simply say yes, and now everything is going to be installed. If you don't see this, I uh, mean that the T-beam is not correctly connected with the USB, so it will fail. For example, if you don't have a real USB uh, cable that is supporting data, but probably will fail also before. So as you can see here is configuring the flash, doing some other magic. And it's pretty comfortable, so it's nothing you have to do, but, you know, watch at those numbers 
and you don't necessarily need to understand how the magic happen. So here are the devices resetting. As soon as the device is installed, uh, you will see, see that uh, you have a different type of screen and visualization. Initially, we'll say uh, hardware error, hardware error, that is kind of scary, but it appears that it's normal, so don't be surprised by that. So one important thing is to remember the port because in the next step you will need to insert the same port to connect your device with Bluetooth to the phone. Okay, so as you can see here, we finish up the installation. So everything is fine. We have firmware version 172 and is installed and is exiting. So the next step is to connect that to, you know, whatever it is that you want to use. We are assuming that you are using a phone and to use the phone, what you need to do is to have a application installed. So what I am using is uh, called Sideband. Sideband installation is straightforward, so I'm not going to cover in this video, but I will put some link in the description so that you will know how to find it and then the installation is kind of straightforward. So the next thing that we want to do is to activate Bluetooth on the device. You can do that also directly by using the application sideband, but it's kind of complicated because you need physically to connect your phone with uh, the Air node or T-Beam. And what I discovered is that the cable is like a USB-C to micro USB. That is not a common cable. So I prefer to do that, you know, from uh, this uh, utility that is really powerful. The only thing that you need to keep in mind is that you will need to insert the COM. You see here, the command is Airnode Conf, your COM number, and then P, P will open uh, Bluetooth and also activate the pairing system. And you see now the device is into Bluetooth pairing mode. And here I go to my phone, that is uh, not my computer anymore, but I'm sharing my computer. And you go to the regular, you know, setting of your Bluetooth and you should see something called Air Node. Now, very important thing that I discover is if you have different uh, Air Nodes activated, for some reason the pairing will fail. It's like the pairing number is sent to the second uh, node for some reason. So my suggestion to go around that is to disable all the other air nodes and to have only one that is active. That is the one that you want to pair. Maybe it's only my experience, but maybe it will save you some, some frustration here. So, but here is pairing. So the pairing number will be also on the display to be sure that you're pairing one device. One thing that I observe is that on the UI of the device, you don't have the ID. So if you have several devices, it's kind of complicated to understand which one is which one. Now the device is connected and that is sideband, the Android application. And we go here to the hardware to activate the hardware. So we go to our node. Now, the minimum setting that you need to insert here is the radio options, and you need to insert a frequency that is legal in your region and that your device support. So in my case, it's uh, 915 megahertz. And then the next thing is connect using Bluetooth. Uh, you have a sort of button called control or no display. And all that this does is displaying a huge reticulum logo on the display instead of very useful information that help you to manage that. So I strongly advise not to use it. Now you can see also on the bottom that you have some additional commands, enable Bluetooth, disable Bluetooth, and start pairing mode. 
that is uh, you know a set of commands that you can use if you have physically your phone or Android device connected to the T-Beam. However, as I said, it works, but it requires a special cable uh, with most phones and it's not widely available. So my suggestion is to use the configuration that we just presented. Now, the next step is to activate the connection. So you see on the connectivity, that is one of the cool thing of the reticulum system. You can have different type of connectivity. So here you see, you can use local Wi-Fi and it's basically always active. You can connect over TCP, but you are not really using a TCP connection. It's only like a tunnel inside TCP. And then we are going to activate connect via air node. And we also activate connect TCP. Please keep in mind that the address there, sideband.connect.reticulum.network, is a test network. That is uh, nice for testing. But if you want to have your own private network, you need to build it and you will need to insert something else there. But the effect is that by activating that, not only you can talk to all the devices uh, that are a link with a R node, but you can also talk to other devices that are linked through TCP. And there is also an option to bridge that. That means that if you have one Android device that is not connected to the internet at all, and then one that is connected to the internet and to their node, like in this case, the second device will do a bridge and send the messages of the first device uh, to the internet. That is extremely powerful, and that is much better than what Mesh Sassy can do. Okay, fundamentally we are ready. So we need to, every time that we um, change the configuration, we need to close the application, restart it. And when you now restart it, you will see that we also activate in the R node. The R node will change, the UI of the R node will change as soon as connected. So you know that it's connected because it gets a different UI. There either is with a big symbol of the project or is um, something with indication, a lot of indicators. So now we send a announce that is like saying, hey, we are here. So everybody in the network is informed and that is the end of our presentation. So to summarize, you know, installing a node is pretty straightforward is you know how to do that. And we will put all the relative information in the, the description and please stay tuned because what we want to do in our Freedux server project is not simply to use a end device, but to connect server to server and to build our flock apart using this technology. So stay tuned for additional information. Thank you.